Hello, I'm Christophe, and I will talk very shortly today about um, headless Chrome automation with R. So we are working on a package called Cree uh, with Romain Lesur, so it's still on, uh, on, on GitHub and not on Crowd. And uh, it will help you connect R and, and Chrome. So what is a headless browser? Um, so you can think of a headless brother as a shadow puppet theater. So in a shadow puppet theater, you will have behind the scene the puppet masters. And the puppet masters, they are acting, they decide everything that happens, but they don't see how uh, the public react or how it reacts um, on the other side. So they are uh, kind of in the dark. And using a headless brother uh, is like that. So you can be the stage director and you can fully decide what should be done and what will happen, but you are completely in the dark. So there is no visual interface to see the results of your action. So uh, it's like using a brother, but you don't see uh, the main front page. And so this is possible because Chrome has a headless mode, and there is a DevTool protocol. So you can have full control. It's built in in, in, in Chrome, and uh, there is some modules like Node.js and, uh, and in JavaScript to control this, and you can interact with the protocol using the Z JSON messages uh, exchange uh, through a WebSocket. So you may already know some of other R-related work about uh, brother and R connection. Um, the main two, one are the decapitated by Bob Rudis, which is uh, wrapping uh, headless Chrome command line or uh, doing the bridge with Node.js, uh, and it was an aspiration. So what is the Crip package? Uh, you can have the full control of Chrome, uh, but without Java, Node.js, or anything else. You just have uh, the Chrome brother, R, and you can connect the two. So it's a low-level API. It's inspired, inspired by the Chrome remote interface, and it gives you access to every function inside the DevTool protocol. So it's more dedicated today to advanced users. Um, and it could also be compatible with other brother that have uh, also the DevTool protocol uh, embedded inside. So you can install it from, the, from this uh, GitHub repo. So how this works? Uh, first, um, Chrome needs to be launched in headless mode. Then you need to connect. Um, the um, R to Chrome through the web socket, and then you will need some, you will build some functions uh, to send command to Chrome and to listen to events. And the Crip package will help you do that and build this async function. So here's an example. As I said, you need to launch Chrome. Uh, then you need to connect Chrome, and here we are using a feature of Cree, which is the um, inspection mode, and with the last version of RStudio, you can see a glimpse of what happens inside the viewer. So if you launch connect uh, Chrome like that, um, you, you can help develop uh, this. The next thing you want to do is to go to a page, to load a page, so you will need to activate a domain, DevTool protocol is built with domain, and uh, each domain is a set of functions, and here we are using the navigate function to load, um, to, to load the page, and we see the results in the browser. So building asynchronous function uh, is like that. Uh, Cree um, is built on top of the promises package, so you can chain a pipe, uh, the commands, the events, everything in the DevTool protocols using the special pipe operators from the promises package. It's not a new one, it's the one from the promises package. And here it's an example of um, asynchronous flow that will dump uh, HTML to a file to for example, uh, using Harvest and standard uh, techniques to, to, to scrap it. And here we are using the runtime um, uh, domain to evaluate some JavaScript directly into the browser after the page is loaded. You can do also everything that the DevTool protocol can allow you. So you can print a PDF, for example. You can do some screenshot or device simulation, even some screencast. Everything that the DevTool protocol allows you is possible with, with, with Cree. Um, so it was short. It was a, <laughs> a short introduction to Cree. You can find more information in the Euros talk uh, by uh, Romain. Uh, it's a conference uh, this year. And uh, we also, it's a very new package, so it's early development, it's working, but we welcome some feedbacks, issues, and more importantly, uh, tell us how you would use this. We, we think it's powerful, but we don't know what should be the use case, so you can open issues and find us at the conference asking us questions and if you want to know more. So, thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Victor, and I work at Dreamers with Fanny.
I'm going to introduce you uh, some package that we have developed to make uh, our Shiny application more attractive and to exploit uh, the full potential of the Shiny package itself. I will talk about four packages, and in particular, my, my first ever package, Shiny Widget. We have been developing applications since 2014 as part of, uh, of our activities, and especially at uh, Electricité de France. Shiny has radically changed the way we communicate the results of our statistical analysis and the report we had to do. Most of these applications were aimed at operational or marketing people. Shiny allows us to make our results attractive while keeping robust methodology in air behind. We have started building web applications with Shiny without any knowledge of JavaScript or CSS. This comes later. After a while, our application all started to look the same. Shiny basic features are great, but the basic layout with the grep panel doesn't really catch the eye. At about that time, Shiny Dashboard and uh, Shiny Times arrived that allowed us to customize the overall appearance of our applications, but what about widgets and the other control? For this reason, we have started to develop our own uh, widgets by integrating JavaScript libraries uh, with new features and by exploiting some of the features of Bootstrap. The first release uh, on CRAN was uh, two years ago, and the last one uh, in March of this year. Here are some widgets available in the package. An alternative to select input with the possibility to select all variables with a button, switch uh, with uh, Google style, radio buttons and checkboxes uh, in which you can integrate icons and uh, add colors, or a menu to hide the list of inputs. Behind each widget is a JavaScript or CSS library, and sometimes both. Integrating this component into Shiny was uh, relatively easy thanks to the high flexibility of Shiny JavaScript uh, IPA and its good documentation. For the user, this is transparent. Just change the name of the function to get a widget. Uh, the second package uh, came after uh, developing many applications. We uh, wanted to know what the user do with our application, so we have developed a package Shiny Logs. We, uh, to record this information at uh, JSON each time you connect to the applications. So we were able to know the profile of the user, the browser used. So to do so, you have only one function to, uh, to use in your server to start tracking shiny events. All is done in JavaScript. You have nothing to change in your, uh, in your previous code. Shiny Buzzy is a package developed for a customer who wanted to integrate global indicators in Shiny application to tell the user that something was happening at the server side. This client did not want to have to modify his existing code or uh, of his interface or modify his server logic. Shiny Buzzy allowed in a one line of code to add such an indicator. You can add a spinner, a progress bar, or a GIF in play pause mode uh, as soon as the code uh, in the server takes uh, time. Uh, the package Shiny Manager is a result of a collaboration with uh, Datastorm. Many people uh, develop Shiny application in a proof of concept mode and want to be able to share the result of, by integrating a security and access to them. The purpose of this package is not to be a longer term solution, but allow you to uh, quickly iterate uh, on your application without uh, having to overthink uh, about security before to use a robust uh, deployment method. In addition, an administrator mode is available, allowing uh, non-technical people to manage the access right to the applications. You can add a uh, user, remove one, set an expiration date, uh, ask a user to change his password, uh, and his next connection. All is done in Shiny with models. All of these packages uh, are, uh, are on crime, so you can use them and uh, make great applications. Thanks for listening to, to me. We have many of our cool projects on our GitHub page, or you can also follow us on uh, Twitter. So hi, I'm Julio, I'm from Brazil. I'm talking about the Alt Zero package. I tried to make a very colorful presentation so that you'll remember me. So what's Alt Zero? 
Uh, it's a package to secure authentication in, in Shiny Apps. So you have your, your credentials there in, in a login page, and then you access your app normally. And why should you care about my package? Uh, it, you should care because it connects with many providers, like Google, Facebook, GitHub, and other providers like uh, Active Directory or G Switch. It's um, an AAAS service. It's a, a authenticate as a service, right? And it's free, uh, if ish. You can, <laughs> you can use uh, that for, I, I think, 7,000 7, uh, authenticate tries uh, per month freely. So it's very, it's very handy and it has a very nice API to use. Um, how to use the package? You just create an app.r file, create your app normally. Um, you can load the out zero package and you need to, uh, to change the shiny app function by this shiny app out zero function. And that's it. Uh, you just need to do that. Ah, pretty awesome, huh? uh, but um, maybe you need to make some configurations, more configurations to connect with the out zero provider. And how to, how do we do that? Uh, you need to, firstly, you need to create an out zero account there, and you need to create an application there, so that you you get a client ID and a client secret to connect with the API of, of Auth0. This, is, this can be done using the uh, Auth0 YAML file, which is, needs to be in the same directory of your, of your app. Uh, and you can use, uh, you need to configure also some uh, things about uh, where will, you will share your app, like your local URL, if you are using, you, you are running locally and the porch, and the remote URL if you're um, uh, using shinyapps.io or shiny server and, and stuff. It's really nice because the, the, the shinyapps.io, you, you can just work, it, it just works with out zero with no more configurations. It's really pretty, pretty easy to, to, to configure. And so, there are some features that are, we are implementing, it's not, it's not uh, ready yet, that are the logout button. We are implementing a logout button so that you can go out your session. You can access also some information about your, your user so that you can create different apps for different users or user groups and stuff. And there's a handy um, uh, function also Use Alt Zero that creates the YAML file so that you can you 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 will be sure that the the configuration file is correct, uh, and that that's the uh, the functions we we implemented uh, this far. So we need help to to make it better. It doesn't work uh, with uh, UI.R and Server.R framework yet. And we need to also to implement Auth0's uh, API uh, fully to manage users and, and stuff. So you can install it from Chrome now. Uh, you can also install the development version in GitHub. And please file issues in the uh, GitHub issues so that we can create more uh, stuff there and, and make it awesome. And that's the creators, um, myself. Uh, Jean Atali is one of the contributors. Uh, he made the logout button, which was awesome. Um, uh, the R6 team, which we call in Brazil Curso R, we give courses in, in R. And I, I would like also to thank José Jesus, which was the person who came with the idea. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Maxim from Open Analytics and I'm going to talk about packaging Shiny applications. And since it's the last day of the conference, you may have already heard several talks on this topic, but at least mine, be, mine will be just five minutes. So, um, so, there are three, um, so there are three basic ideas that I want to share. Um, 
First is using functions to define UI and server components of the application. Second is to use models for logical pieces of your application. And the third one is to put everything into an, into an R package. Um, so we start with the, with the first point of the function. So with, with traditional shiny apps, uh, you have two R script files, server.r and ui.r. And here I propose instead that we use functions for that. As you can see on the screen, a simple example, we have a function for UI. With, which contains all the, all the layout and the function for the server. And then with that, we can easily add a function to launch our, our application. And um, so why would you want to do that? Um, with this approach, it's, it's very easy to, to parameterize your application, uh, and which is convenient for, for debugging, for, for, for developing. You can also create uh, different applications for different environments with parameters. So you can see here a, a very simple example. I just I add a simple toggle uh, for debug. And so if it's set to true, I have extra ele elements that are shown in my UI, which is useful for development purposes. And as soon as I, I'm ready to, to release it, I just, I just need to set this uh, argument to false. And then I don't see this. And, and so f for the second um, idea about, uh, about, the, about the models, I will not explain how to do it, but some at least some adventures. So you separate the application logic um, into several pieces. Um, and then, uh, so th the code is, becomes cleaner and more structured in the and instead of yeah, splitting your server file for large applications. And since uh, uh, the models are the functions, you can potentially test them separately with a bit of yeah, extra work. And then again, uh, since uh, they are functions, it's very easy to reuse them, both within your application and between the applications. And if it's in the package, it's also easy for other people to, to import them. Um, and then the last point of packaging applications. Um, so, so the main uh, idea is that we can, uh, we can leverage all the advantages of the R packaging ecosystem, such as uh, managing dependencies and uh, resolving namespaces. Uh, it's also easy to uh, have versions, documentations, and tests. And we can make use of our common check for the code consistency checks and so on. Um, and, and then again, uh, we have a cleaner structure since all the R code li lives in the R, um, R directory. And uh, as a package, it's very easy to uh, share and distribute uh, either as a bundle or by pushing to a repository. But I also want to mention some possible shortcomings of this approach, that uh, when you set up models, it may require a bit of extra coding, and you need to take care that the communication between models um, is smooth. Um, and then another point that with a simple app, you can just modify your uh, UI.R file and then, then uh, refresh the browser and you can see updates. This is not possible with the package, of course, but it's very easy to, uh, to emulate this if you use um, helper functions from package load or dev tools. And, th and another point is that you can't use directly www folder in the UI, uh, but again, this can be elevated if you use system file in a combination with other source path functions. So now, if you have a package, it's um, where do we deploy it? And in Shiny Proxy or, 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 or Docker, Mm -hmm. Context is very easy since you have already listed all the dependencies in the description file of the package. And you just need to add the package into the Docker image, and then you can install it together with all the dependencies by using the functions from, uh, from the remote so dev tools. And if for your deployment you still need an application folder, it's very easy to create one. You can just have a file app.r with a single line as below. And then here, as I mentioned, we don't want to show the debug elements from our simple example, so we just set it to false uh, when the application is deployed. So to sum up, I have uh, presented the three basic ideas. You put your UI and server components and functions, use uh, models for logical pieces of the application, and you package everything. And uh, with this, I encourage you to try uh, and see if it works and if it's helpful for your next project. And uh, if you haven't already, check out Shiny Proxy, which is our product for enterprise ready open source Shiny deployment. And I will be happy to discuss it further after the session. And thank you all for your attention. Hello, everyone. So my name is Abbas Rizvi from the Columbus Collaboratory in the United States. <clears throat> I'm here to present to you Photon. It's a project that we've been working on that combines the Electron framework and Shiny and allows you to deploy standalone applications. Our motivation, our motivation for this was basically the fact that some companies and organizations don't necessarily want cloud-based solutions due to protected information or perhaps maybe a, in the clinical setting like a uh, you know, patient information. And we want to come up with a solution that would allow them to uh, get the Shiny app in their hand and uh, 
be, uh, be able to deploy an executable using the Electron framework. So what, how we implemented this was by um, making changes to the R portable, and we pulled that down, made some changes to make a relative local path, and then we packaged Node.js, uh, rendering engine and, or, or the runtime and the Chromium render, rendering engine, and we created this package called Photon. And it's a RStudio add-in, so all you have to do is download the package using remote. You could load the library, uh, click tools after you load the library, and then click browse, browse add-ins. And it creates this kind of, yeah, you can, you can go ahead and then click on the Photon add-in box, click execute, which invokes this function, Photon RStudio add-in. And it is a mini UI display, so it has this, um, you know, you can select your directory, you can, uh, you know, add different uh, descriptions. So you can, what you want to do first is fill in the text boxes and, and, you know, describe your package or describe your application, and you can actually install additional packages that you want to do on top of the base packages that come with our Photon app. The next thing you want to do is actually just point to your app.r. So you can click select directory, and then you will actually find your app.r, click that, and then just click create job. And what that's going to do is it's going to invoke Electron, it's going to begin building it, and, and uh, after a few minutes you're going to have this Electron app which you can actually distribute, just, you can just send it away and it gets right into uh, the uh, user's hands and it really requires very minimal effort. So the, the, what's next is actually that we need to uh, kind of address how bulky this is. So this actually pulls down a version of R and all the packages that come with R. So the person who actually develops the, uh, the application will actually you know, have a very big and large bulky uh, package. But uh, what we're going to do is work on that and we're gonna extend it to Linux and we're gonna uh, extend it to actually deal with GitHub packages too. And here are our, our team, Pete Gordon, Slava, and uh, Katie Sasso. And I'll be happy to talk to you guys after this about this package. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Andreas and I'm from Samsung Semiconductor Europe and I like to talk about visualizing new amounts of data, uh, fleet data using R Shiny and Leaflet. And I work uh, at the Smart Machines Europe group, uh, which was founded at the end of last year in, in Munich, in Germany, and we are mainly focused on uh, ADAS and autonomous driving, and I work there as a data scientist. And the motivation for uh, this talk was if I use uh, R Shiny in combination with, with Leaflet, I often use it uh, for, um, for presenting the uh, customer a first prototype uh, of the data. And uh, if you use uh, uh, it uh, with Leaflet, you have often a problem that, uh, that the browser gets uh, freezing if, do, if you have too many data to show in there. And if you now use a, a poor uh, leaflet approach, uh, you um, normally um, use the, the global.r file where you can load all the data at the, big, uh, at the startup uh, of, the file, uh, of the Shiny application, and then you have it uh, as a data table, and you can use the server.r file to, uh, at one point to uh, add provider tiles uh, uh, to add a, a map. Uh, for, for leaflet and to render the, all the data as circles there. And here um, I have one alternative uh, approach. You can use a, a tile layer based approach where the tile provider is used to, to fetch the data from a NoSQL database like Apache Cassandra here. And uh, I use the Plumber package to, to uh, develop a REST API to uh, be able to fetch the data for, uh, for, for the Shiny application. The data source is uh, Apache Cassandra, and then you um, can, can define a tile based on the zoom level uh, X and Y using the Mercator projection here. At the startup uh, of the Shiny application, you have to, to give the, the host and port uh, of uh, the Cassandra database, and also you need the, the key space and the table name here. And 
uh, then you have to calculate uh, the Mercator uh, projection using the calc tile function, and also you, uh, it is needed to calculate the position of the data relatively to the tile size. Uh, then uh, we have um, a render tile function where uh, zoom x and y is used uh, as a file name, and then you can plot all the data on transparent PNG images. And uh, furthermore, we need uh, two REST APIs. One is a uh, REST API to, to trigger the, the rendering of the tiles using the uh, Plumber package, and another is the, the HTTP servers to, to serve the tiles uh, for, the, for the Shiny app using the serve our package. And then, uh, if we have the, the tile layer based approach, we can um, we have the, the, the map bounds, the zoom level, and then uh, we can uh, use a, a GET request for the REST API to, to trigger on the, the tile rendering. And uh, when the, the tiles are um, here, you can uh, overlay them to the, to the map. And um, I have uh, there, there are two main possibilities to use here. You can it uh, on uh, per request on the fly or in a batch run. And I plan to do uh, develop a, a R package from that. Uh, so far, you can find a demo at my GitHub account, uh, and you can contact me by mail or by, uh, on Twitter. Thank you very much. <laughs>